Welcome to Art with Ian. Today we are talking about how to draw a fairy with a butterfly. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you've been here before, welcome back. So as you can see, we're just jumping right in. We're in the sketching phase. Now I've sped up my recording of this process by a couple times to make it the video a little more accessible. It would have been kind of long if I had just played it on in real time, but I tried to keep it slow enough that you can still follow along with my process without any issues there. And we'll just go ahead and talk through how, uh, how I went about doing this. So the first thing that I do when I start to design something is I grab a, a kind of an unforgiving pen-like brush. In this case, it's just the hard round pressure br uh, brush, the stock Photoshop brush. And I just start scratching lines down. Um, and I try to recreate the feeling of drawing with a pen, sketching with a pen, where once a line is down, a line is down. And yes, of course, I can erase because it's digital. But I try to get that feeling of I'm just designing. I'm not making a good drawing. In fact, I'm not making a drawing really at all. I'm, I'm trying to design something. And I'm searching for what feels right. And I'm trying to completely ignore any kind of nagging feeling of, but it looks like crap. Because over the years, I've learned that that little nagging voice of it needs to be a good drawing will completely destroy your ability to design to, to your fullest. Uh, you know, it'll take away your ability to, to design at the highest level that you can. Because you're, you're taking a bunch of your brain power away from solving the real problem. The real problem right now is just the design. What's the pose? Um, what, do, what does the hair look like? What does the hand look like? What do the wings look like? What's she wearing? Um, those kinds of, of issues, th that's what we need to be solving right now. And getting everything proportionate. Um, as you can see, I've used the lasso tool and the transform tool to kind of adjust her hand and adjust certain things. And then once you get everything kind of to a place that you're you're happy with, then because it's digital art, you can just create a new layer and, you know, do a nice drawing over the top. So just getting the butterfly laid in now. And you can see again, still just, you know, I just, it's almost like sculpting where you just push things around until you find something you like, and then you start to refine that once you've gotten the clay where you want it. I didn't always used to sketch with this brush. I used to use a brush that was a lot more like a pencil and I found myself getting a lot more caught up trying to make a nice drawing from the beginning because it was easier to do that. The reason I've switched over to this really unforgiving brush is because it it kind of helps me to, to, like I mentioned, it kind of helps me to let go and just treat it like it's a pen and I'm just searching for something and then I would th with the intention of doing an overlay which I'm now on to so you can see with the first layer I've turned the opacity down I've created a layer over the top I'm actually still using that same brush but now since I know where I'm going with it I'm able to get you know more decent strokes and just using the one line to, to you know tell the viewer what they're seeing however this drawing will eventually be it's going to be a painting with no line work left in it and so even still i'm not treating it like if i was inking comic book art or something where you really really want like extremely nice lines it's not it, the the piece won't be featuring line art so right now i'm just trying to make sure i'm giving myself a really good roadmap to paint when I go to paint, like so I know exactly what I want as I start painting. Just uh, defining some of the dress shape there. And even once you get to this phase, I encourage you not to assume that your designing part is done. You can always change, like here I'm changing the size of the head there. You can always, as you start to refine, you can always see new ways to improve or you can see something that you failed to get right and it was harder to tell until you started cleaning things up and then 
as you know, as things get cleaner, you start to see your ability to see new issues will expand, and you should always always be looking to continue designing throughout the entire process. Trying to give her a little bit more shape in the hip there. It was looking a little, you know, like a, just a, a hump almost. So now I'm trying to close everything off with my sketch so that I can create a selection around the outside. This is the best way to get a mask filled in uh, using the wand tool. You'll see, no, I still don't quite have it there. The selection's going into the arm, so I gotta close off there at the hand. And now I can create a selection. And what you do is you invert that selection, create a layer underneath the line art, and fill it in. And I still had a couple issues, but it's still, so, you know, I'll just go fill those in by hand. But it's still, it's so much faster than actually painting everything in, you know, by hand. Um, and then you, once you have a mask down, the way that I work, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that once I have a mask down, then I just paint everything locked to that mask so that I can blow my brush up and use any textures I may want and nothing goes outside of that original mask. It's, um, it's one of the things that I think if you're doing digital art, you should probably be u uh, utilizing clipping masks. They're, ju they're just so helpful. Now just zoom in a little bit, make sure that my mask is actually the shape I want it to be because like I mentioned, the line art won't be tying this down forever. So that means that I have to, my fill, my mask actually needs to be quite clean because once that line art goes away, any discrepancies with the silhouette from the, the mask itself will stand out like a sore thumb. Of course, they can be fixed later, but it's always nice to just try to stay on top of those things the less things that you leave needing to be fixed later, the less mistakes you end up with at the end of your piece that you may or may not catch. So now I'm going into the wings. I'm doing more like very, I'm, I'm going for an earthy palette with this. I have an earthy palette in mind. Instead of doing like kind of like the dragonfly wings or, you know, those, those see-through, very, very ethereal wings that a lot of times you'll see on a fairy. I'm going for something a little bit more like this is like earth earth fairy or like uh, forest fairy or well I mean I guess we always think of the forest when we think of fairies but something more a little bit more earthy and I, I really like that color palette and then when you bring you know you can bring little pinks and and uh, lavenders and things in and they kind of sing really nice with the browns and creams tans You'll also probably be noticing that that hand looks, uh, the one on the ground looks really la like I didn't do anything with it. Like it looks kind of like a blob. There's no fingers. The reason I didn't do that, the reason I didn't actually define any fingers there is because I know in the future for this painting, I will be putting grass on the ground and those blades of grass are going to be covering her fingers. And having some foresight when you work is a really nice way to save yourself time if you know if you don't care about how much time it takes you to do a piece then I guess do whatever or if you're practicing hands by all means you know draw the hand even though you're gonna cover it up but for me I wanted to get this done and not that I was rushing but I wanted to get it done I typically have a you know try to be efficient mentality when I paint and I so knowing I'm going to cover that hand up, why all it needs is just the color to exist so that where the blades of grass don't quite cover, you still see the color and it tells you, oh yeah, that's her hand. And then you'll do the rest in your head. You'll you'll paint the hand for me with your with your own imagination. So still in here, just working these wings. I wanted them to be pretty neat looking kind of took inspiration from like moth, uh, like moth wings. I'm not sure how much this is very butterfly-esque, the, the wings, but a lot of times moths are more pretty than butterflies. I mean, there are some really, really pretty moths out there. Starting to lay her dress in, and I only take the dress up as far as I know that I want maybe to see through the hair 
and then where the, I know the hair is going to be too thick to see through it, I don't paint up a anymore. And again, that's the same mentality as with the fingers in the grass. You know, only, you know, having that seeing into the future of your piece, knowing what you are, what's required to get what you want out of it, and only doing that much. Trying to tie her dress in with her wings without it being the exact same palette. So what you'll see is that I've warmed up, warmed things up for the dress. They're a little bit more saturated and that just, that just about separates it out. But I don't want it to be like popping off of, of each other. I want them to like harmonize, you know, <clears throat> just laying in the, uh, initial kind of base color for her hair. I'll, what I like to do with hair usually is go, and I, and a, a lot of times I do this with other, you know, anything is to start kind of in the middle and then paint my way to the lights and paint my way to the darks from that middle tone. So that's basically like her hair if it was, it's local color. Uh, if you're not familiar with what local color is, local color is the color of something without light or shadow affecting it. And basically everything I'm doing right now is local color. You can also see that I kind of went with a, a kind of a, a bit of a more yellow skin tone instead of peach. And I will paint, I intend to paint some, some more peach and, you know, that there I'm going right now. I, but I want to keep it, I want it to sing a bit against, I want the skin to have a variation in tone and I want the overall tone to be a little bit more yellow. And then where those, where that, the pinker skin tone comes in, I kind of want to keep that as like the perimeter and going into the shadow. I'm not rendering this, like if you've seen other videos of mine, I'm not rendering this the same way that I would have, you know, typically rendered things where a lot of times I'll use multiply and overlay layers to create my light and shadow, but I wanted to be more subtle with the way this was lit. And inst so instead of just going in there and using multiply and, and overlay, I'm actually just painting with normal layers. If you look over on the right where my layers are set up, you can see I've got three layers clipped there. And right now, the one I'm working on, it says normal for the mode. And I eventually will get into a little bit of overlay and, and stuff to like bring some, some really bright bits out. And I think I'm, I do get a little bit into uh, multiply towards the end, but I set up pretty much set up all my light all my rendering with just normal layers. Like I said, you can see me going back and forth, adding light, adding dark on top of that original color. And that, that helps to bring out the variation that you want to see in a stroke, in a strand of hair, you kind of each, you know, strands of hair kind of clump together a little bit. So you never want to just paint hair, 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 you know, do thousands of hairs. But within each clump, there, there's probably going to be a few sections. And each section should pro be rendered kind of like a, a bit like a cylinder with light hitting it kind of. But, you know, not too extreme, but just to give it volume in life. I'm just starting to work on her face a little bit now. I end up using um, I end up using the liquify tool a little bit later in this to change her face a little bit. And so if you're not familiar with how the liquify tool works, definitely stick around and learn about that because in my opinion it's it's a really amazing and powerful tool. If you know how to use it, you have to be careful with it. It's not going to solve major problems for you, but it will solve small problems if you know how to use it. So if you've never used the liquify tool, or if you've wondered about how to use the liquify tool, definitely stick around because that'll be coming up in a bit. 
All right, just laying in again, harmonizing the color palette. This is a very, I want the whole color palette to work in harmony together. A lot of times, if you've seen some of my other work, a lot of times you'll notice that I'll do some things more like if there's a warm, then I want to push a cool, or if there's a cool, I want to push a warm. In this, I'm like really, really tying everything together. There, there, there's not a lot of that playing colors off of each other. It's like bringing everything together. I want this doll to look like if they wanted to hide in in a in the woods somewhere where there's like mushrooms and moss and trees and stuff. They could just literally stay still and probably almost disappear into their surroundings. They don't have any green on them, so you know, maybe not so much in a big patch of moss, but you know, those little under places in the forest. I don't know how if how much any of you maybe have spent time out in the forest, but I absolutely love going out into nature and walking around and looking at things. And I've done that since I was a kid. And if you look, if you get down into places where the sun doesn't get, and even a lot of rain doesn't get, you there are these little places where you could imagine these kinds of beings living, which is obviously how they came into lore in the first place. But... Anyways, so I'm still laying in shadow stuff. Now I'm using multiply. So I kind of wanted to, I don't want to destroy what I've done, but I want to add some depth to it. So now I'm using multiply, but you can see I'm using a really warm color for my multiply. Like I'm not just using a gray, kind of a gray for the shadow. I'm going really warm with it. Also, you can see now that I've just turned down my, my outline. I didn't turn it off all the way, but I'm just starting to try and get the painting to do the, the work and not the outline. I don't want the outline to tie it down forever, so eventually you've got to kind of pull that band-aid off. It can be hard to do because it's like, oh crap, it doesn't look so good all of a sudden. But then you have to paint it back up. You know, like taking the lines out of the eyes, for example, yeah, the, out the outline is completely off now and you can see what is you know how it's basically all all of the the little areas of deep shadow that the outline was pretending to to hold down they're all gone now so i've to, i've got to paint that in i didn't really there were a few things about the face that i that i wanted to kind of change. And I didn't want to go crazy with it because it's not really that visible. Like the, it's not a portrait. It's not featuring her face. It's featuring her whole body and the butterfly. But, oh, here we go. So here's liquify, right? You can see where that cross section is in the middle of the circle. That, when you click and pull or push, you can change the whole painting but it's it's so it's moving you can see it's actually moving and the size of the circle around the crosshairs will indicate how much you pull with you if you have a really small circle it'll it'll move it horribly like it'll just pull one tiny bit but if you have a bigger circle around that crosshair you can actually take with you whole sections of the pixels and you'll deteriorate your image really fast if you're not careful when you're doing this. But if you want to like move an eye up or change the expression, let's say you want a little bit more kindness in those eyebrows like I did, uh, you can just raise the eyebrows up using the liquify tool. Or let's say you want to change a smile, you want to increase a smile or you want to decrease a smile, totally doable. Or you know you want the chin to stand out more or come back more. All of those little things uh, making the nostril uh, placement change, the size of the nose, the angle of the nose. You can pretty much sculpt a face using that tool. Um, I suggest not doing it at the very end. You know, I suggest doing it and then going in and painting over it to any, you know, get any weirdness that might be left behind, artifacts or whatever. But yeah, super nice way to not have to kind of scrap all of the color work you've done in order to change the design itself. So now I'm starting to paint in that uh, 
that grassy area that she's on, getting a little bit of light in there, and also bringing up, now I'm bringing up the light on her as well. And I'm using overlay for this. Again, the reason I'm using overlay for this instead of just a normal layer mode is because I can paint over what I've done and not have it um, literally mask over what I've done, but it just adds light to what I've already done. Painting a shadow underneath her. You'll note that for the shadow underneath her, I went with a very cool shadow, whereas I've done super warm shadows on her. And that's because I want her to look alive and warm. And when you start getting really cool shadows onto like a human, like, you know, flesh, it looks dead. And it can be very realistic. And if you're doing a, a super realistic piece and you're, you know, like, let's say you're copying a photograph, you might find that the shadow, some of the shadows on, on the body are a, a very gray, very cool. Um, and if the whole piece around that is super realistic, then, then it'll probably sell fine. But if you're just doing an illustration and you want it to be inviting and warm and, you know, nice to look at, you probably want those shadows on the human, on the skin to be quite warm. So now I'm just going in and starting to, you know, getting closer now towards the end of the of the piece where it, you're starting to look for the little, the little things, you know, you're we're into secondary stuff now for sure. Starting to paint the flowers into her hair. You can see that there's still quite a bit of looseness to this. And I don't I don't think that I ever really make it a tight painting by any means, but you know, just there are little bits of, of tying it down to go here, you know. Okay, using that liquify tool again. See what I did? Moved her eyes up, I've changed changing her expression. It's, I can't stress enough how nice it is to use that tool, but at the same time, be careful with it because it can completely destroy the work just as quick as it can help you out. It can actually destroy it. So I, I would, uh, if you're going to use it, I would suggest practicing with it on something that's a little less important to you first. And just kind of get a feel for how much gets pulled with the circle. How big do you want the circle to be in order to move a certain part of the the uh, the painting? All right, just getting in and adding a little bit of life to these flowers. Nothing, nothing too over the top. Cleaning that up there along the head. Throwing some strands of hair on there just to break that silhouette. Hair is usually very rarely just like a perfect edge. You know, if someone has like product in their hair or they have really thick, silky hair, it might just be a straight edge, but pretty typically when you look at someone, if you stare at their head, <laughs> just don't let them catch you, uh, you'll see that there's strands of hair and stuff coming off. All right, painting in a few things here on the ground. Getting rid of some edge there that I didn't want. And I think we might be at the end here. Just doing little touches. And that does it. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications of future videos. Leave a comment if you want, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Ring the bell for notifications of future videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.